You know, the doing recitals, you, you go off and you can have a bit of water and adjust your clothing and all of this, and <clears throat> but we have to do this in front of you.
We've heard music of Gustav Mahler and Alban Berg in that uh, set of performances. Carolyn Sebrun, the mezzo-soprano, Eliza Garth at the piano. The Alban Berg song is called Hier ist Friede from the Altenburg Lieder. And before that, Mahler's Wer hat dies Liedlein erdacht? And uh, both of these are good examples, I guess, of turn of the century or early 20th century Austrian music. And it's just hard to believe that the Berg is a 12-tone piece. It's just so beautiful. So lyrical, yeah. Real, uh, as you were telling me before the program, there's a real line to sing, a real melody. Yeah, I think Berg really knew how to write for the voice. Mm. And he's very gracious. Even though the music is difficult, yeah. he always has something in there to help you if you know where to look. Mm -hmm. And that's a nice thing. Well, in that one relatively brief piece, he seems to have hit the bottom notes of the mezzo-soprano <laughs> range and the top all at uh, the same well, time. Well, actually, this is a soprano piece. And really? uh, it's, it was a bit of a stretch for me. Huh. Yeah. Well, nicely done. Yeah, we, we do our best. All right, uh, Eliza and Carolyn, we're going to give you folks a chance to rest for a few minutes. And
Music of Debussy, actually music and text by Claude Debussy. We heard De Greve, sung by Carolyn Sebrun, mezzo-soprano, Eliza Garth at the piano. Carolyn, were you stealing from the soprano literature again there, or is that... Well, actually, this is in the lower key, but my teacher has insisted that I relearn it. <laughs> <laughs> In the hierarchy, I think it's about a third, a third higher. So that's what I'll be doing this summer, uh -huh. along with um, I'm learning Rosina for Barbara Seville mm -hmm. in the fall. I'll be doing that um, in Martinique, and this will be part of uh, the Debussy will be part of our program when we go to. Uh, well, let's see, in March we mm -hmm. will be Eliza and I will be in uh, Boston at Jordan Hall, at Washington D.C. at the Smithsonian. And then, uh, thanks to the Pro Musicis Foundation, I will be making my European recital debut, starting at the uh, Opera Comique in Paris. Great. So I'm Great. very excited about that. Mm -hmm. And then we go to Rome. And uh, Eliza, if she's willing, will be going with me. Oh. <laughs> uh, Eliza, with do you need arm. to have yeah, you, I was gonna say, do you need to have your arm twisted to go to Rome and Paris? Uh, so uh, we're, we're really looking forward to that. And mm -hmm. of course, the format is the same when we go abroad. Um, we Hospices. will be going to, yes, mm -hmm. so I'll have Versus. to brush up on my French and my Italian well, you've, conversational uh, language. You've, you've gone through uh, some French, some Spanish, and some German songs with, uh, without too much trouble this afternoon already, and we finally come to some English language yes. material. Did you, did you sing spirituals as a kid? Uh, is this something that you came to later in life? Well, uh, th you know, African-American people are not one big group. Mm -hmm. We all come from different uh, backgrounds. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, my grandparents came from Alabama. And my father was a singer. And his mother, my grandmother, was a singer as well. They were church singers. Although my father used to do wop a little bit. <laughs> but uh, um, they grew up in the Baptist church singing. So singing was always a part of my life and my, and my upbringing. So it was something that came natural up to a point because one cannot go into operatic music and quote classical, unquote. I, I put that in quotes because classical is a period mm -hmm. in what we call art music. Um, and do it naturally. One must train for it. And even in the singing of spirituals, especially the, the um, now we have composers, uh, well starting with uh, Hall Johnson and Rosamond Johnson and, and uh, Margaret Bonds and all of these people who are classically trained mm -hmm. um, went to places uh, to study such as New England Conservatory and the Juilliards, etc. And uh, they've arranged them. And um, Marian Anderson, Roland Hayes, uh, Dorothy Maynard, Betty Allen, mm -hmm. and many people like that brought spirituals to the concert stage. Paul Robeson, of course, of how course. can we leave him out? So this is kind of uh, our folk art music, and uh, we always like to do some of these on the program um, because they're so beautiful. Yeah. I think perhaps we'll just do the two okay. uh, by Charles Lloyd, and um, <coughs> these are arranged. Mr. Lloyd is a composer. He's on the faculty of Southern University in Baton Rouge now, but in 1978 he was uh, an award winner. I think it was Distinguished Accompanying Award winner in the Tchaikovsky competition. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm very happy to do these. I had to beg him for them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if he's listening, uh, or I'm going to send him the tape, I'm sure. I just know that I appreciate him allowing me to do these. The first one is You May Bury Me in the East, and the last one, which I think uh, we'll close with, is Hush, Somebody's Calling My Name. All right, once again, Carolyn Sebrun, mezzo-soprano, Eliza Garth at the piano live on WNYC-FM on Around New York. Thank you. 
in conclusion to this afternoon's Around New York, courtesy of mezzo-soprano Carolyn Sebrin and pianist Eliza Garth, performing two uh, American spirituals arranged by Charles Lloyd. We heard You May Bury Me in the East and Hush Somebody's Call in My Name. And Carolyn, in one hour, you, you've covered a heck of a lot of ground. The, the German songs, the French, the Spanish, some uh, English language pieces here. Uh, M really impressive that you're able to get through all of this. You still have a, a bit of breath left in your body. Well, we're going to rest now. <laughs> I just, John, I just want to thank you for having us on so we have an opportunity to talk about Pro Music Chiefs. And um, I'd just like to take a moment to ask everyone to support your artists. We work hard, mm -hmm. and we're so happy when you're there for us, whether we're at the Met, which I hope to be one day, or singing... Um, in a nursing home, mm -hmm. in a ward. Or in okay. Rome, or Paris, or wherever, so... Or wherever. Well, thank you. Carolyn and Eliza, thank you both so much for being here this afternoon. It's been a, a real pleasure having the two of you here. Oh, a pleasure. You sounded right. great. Thank you. <laughs> you're the best, Majel. Uh, you're the best. You're the best uh, in making a home, in being a husband, and in being a, a boatman. <laughs> so this is La Regatta Veneziana. Great. These are songs of Rossini, sung by my guest this hour on Around New York, Carolyn Sebron, and Wayne Sanders is at the piano. This is all live on WNYC. Hmm. <laughs>
The three songs of Rossini, La Regata Veneziana. It's um, Carolyn Sibron, the mezzo-soprano, who is my guest in this hour. Wayne Sanders at the piano, and she not only has a lovely voice, she has a real trill. Ah, well, thank you. You know, when you don't have a trill, you have to sort of, uh, what do they say, you shake your foot. <laughs> but you have a real trill. Well, well, I may be shaking, but not for the trill. Just <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, it doesn't. You sure don't look nervous when you sing, I'll tell you. It looks so easy. La Regata Veneziana. Is that mm-hmm. the name? Yes. Yeah. The uh, Venetian Regata, the right? Boat songs. Yes. Yeah, the boat songs. They're cute. Well, she'll be back, and so will Wayne, to talk about what they've been doing and what they are doing and things like that when Around New York continues. Don't. This is Around New York. I'm Steve Sullivan, and my guests this hour, Carolyn Sebron, mezzo-soprano, and Wayne Sanders at the piano. Carolyn, am I saying your name right? I want to make sure I do. Sebron, yes. Sebron. Yeah. Sebron. And uh, in a moment, you're going to sing... Well, actually, the rest of the uh, afternoon here, the rest of the hour, you're going to sing some American songs. I want to touch real briefly on just some of what you've been doing. Um, you were with Wayne's company, Opera Ebony. Opera w- Ebony, Which yes. is based here in New York. And uh, you took Porgy and Bess over to Sweden, to Gothenburg? Well, um, this is my first time traveling internationally with Opera Ebony because Opera Ebony has been to Russia, Finland, South America, and he didn't take me. Wayne, (laughs) Wayne, how could you? Wayne! I saved the best. Oh, I see. Oh, thank you. Well, now, uh, Wayne, you took you took Porgy and Bess over to Sweden. Well, what we did, uh, we uh, performed with the Gothenburg Symphony in Sweden and the uh, Gothenburg Chorus, and I took about a fifty-minute um, scene uh, scenes from Porgy. Oh, I see. Yeah. And I, yeah. Yeah. And I took Dorothy Rudd Moore's Frederick Douglass, uh, which Carolyn um, premiered for us uh, in, in 1985. Oh, I see. And I took scenes from Trimanisha, Scott Joplin's Trimanisha. How did that go over there? Do they? You, I think that, first of all, it was my first time being in Scandinavia, and um, I've been to Europe before, but it's just different, and the people were, were really wonderful. They really yeah. were. Yeah. Uh, very open, very accepting. It is so clean there. The air is so That's fresh. It's a beautiful place. Kind of reminds me of Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I just want to say, the, the thing about Wayne now, he's, he's being a, a little modest, because when he says scenes, people just assume that you're going to stand up and sing. The thing about Opera Ebony, um, we have... As one of the stage directors we work with is Hope Clark, who you may know that name from Jelly's Last Jam, mm-hmm. as uh, Hope was nominated for a Tony Award last year for her choreography. Hope is also an accomplished stage director. And uh, through Opera Ebony, um, I've worked with her um, on the medium. She staged the medium. And because Hope is a dancer as well, she demands of her singers sometimes the, th- the same things she demands of her dancers. Oh, my goodness. So in the medium, Hope had me crawling all over the floor. Oh, Lord. <laughs> because, you know, Baba gets drunk and she falls down, all kinds of things go on. Uh, for this particular um, 
venture. Um, we were semi-staged. Yeah. So, yes, we would come and we would do our arias and things like that, but it wasn't, say, the way you would see it at Carnegie Hall where you just stand right. there and you're in a beautiful gown yeah. and your hair is immaculate and your makeup is, is wonderful. Um, I sang the part of Serena. I had a, a wonderful black, <laughs> black, black dress uh, to signify mourning and then a veil that came over yeah. and I would, she was and very I dramatic walked, with and it. I walked <laughs> out now this this is how this is how opera ebony works <laughs> I didn't just go and stand in my place in the, at the beginning of the concert I had to make an entrance and then the veil had to come up and all of this so there are things that you that opera ebony does that are a little different and that's what makes opera ebony special yeah well congratulations to you both for that yeah um, you're about to she mentioned Cincinnati because before the show I found out and people listening have to think that I'm probably stacking the people who come here because so many people come here who were either born there or lived in Cincinnati. Uh, I spent some time there too, although I was born in Boston. Uh, but you were born in Cincinnati. Born and raised in Cincinnati. Yeah. Went to Walnut Hills High School. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful Which school. Which is just important because uh, this next composer went to Walnut Hills as well. He did. Leo Edwards. Leo Edwards. Leo uh, Edwards is on the faculty of Manus. Oh. Uh, here in here in Manhattan, and we have two songs of by him today. One is a very serious song called "The Ballad of Birmingham," yeah, and the other one is called "Rock and Chair." Yeah, uh, "Ballad of Birmingham" is about the four girls uh, that were killed oh. uh, when the uh, church was bombed during yeah. the civil rights uh, movements in the '60s. Yeah. Um, it kind of reminds me of that Mahler uh, song, um, "Das Irisches Leben." Uh, it kind of reminds me of that in, in spirit because it's uh, the little girl wants to go to the march and the mother says no, go to church and because you know at the march there may be guns and dogs and things and it's very dangerous for a little girl, so she goes to church and that's where she is killed. Uh, Rock and chair is a little more um, uh, anyone who has a grandmother who used to sit on the front porch and rock in a chair. You'll kind of uh, enjoy this song. Yeah. Um, it comes out of the uh, African-American heritage, but I think anybody can relate to it. Um, I, I just think it's, it's cute, yeah. and, and, and I like it. Um, the other two songs we'll, we'll talk about later on sure. by John Carigliano, um, who I'm sure people in, in New York would know. Uh, there's also a Cincinnati connection there. No I'll, kidding. I'll let you know My what that goodness. is later. Anyway, these are by Leo Edwards. I'm anxious to hear these. Ballad of Birmingham is the first song, and then Rock and Chair. Carolyn Sebron, the mezzo-soprano, my guest this hour on Around New York, and at the piano is Wayne Sanders.
Two songs of Leo Edwards, Rock and Chair, and before that, Ballad of Birmingham, sung by my guest this hour and around New York, Carolyn Sebron, mezzo-soprano Wayne Sanders at the piano. Um, <clears throat> before we get to the uh, John Corleano, tell me what's... Th this has been quite a year for you, including a debut at the Opera Comique in, in Paris. What, well, what not with the Opera Company, a recital debut in Paris. At, at the Opera At the Opera Comique. Yeah, at the yeah, Opera they, Comique. They had the hall. Well, I tell you something... Um, how did it start off? The first thing I did this year was uh, with the Detroit Symphony. Yeah, that was a debut. That was a debut. <laughs> <laughs> Songs from the Life of a Martyr by Undine Moore, who I had the pleasure of meeting uh, many years ago. She's now deceased. Um, Leslie Dunner, Dr. Leslie Dunner is the conductor. Nama Yarvey is the number one, and Leslie is his... his, his um, Nama was just here Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, oh, hey. Oh, yeah. And as a matter of fact, in Gothenburg, uh, his son... I think his first name is Pavel, is it, Wayne? Mm -hmm. Pavel Yarvi is, is the conductor for the symphony. Oh, is so, that right? So somehow, you know, we're, we're traveling in the same circles, but not at the same time. Yeah, Nemi is also there uh, with the Gothenburg. Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, very interesting. But anyway, that's how the year started, and it didn't stop until three weeks ago when I came home from Paris. Goodness. So um, let's see, what else happened? Well, I had the... Uh, recital debuts uh, for Pro Music Chiefs. And the wonderful thing about it is you could never, if you won a prize, say $10,000, it could never compare with what Pro Music Chiefs does for you because not only do they set up the hall, they provide beautiful venues. Um, th the concerts in Europe were very well attended um, and the concerts here have been well attended as well. Um, you couldn't do that by yourself. That's the whole point. That's right. So if you, if you tried to add it up in dollar figures, it would go well beyond, say, that's a $10,000 pr dollar prize, which yeah. sounds very impressive. So that's the first thing. Um, I also uh, went back, uh, in a way, uh, in when I first came out of the Juilliard, the first big orchestral um, job I ever had was with Dance Theater of Harlem and Milton Rosenstock, uh, you may know that name, was a conductor. And it was the Songs of Mahler ballet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, at that time it was eight songs, uh, five from Deskanab and Wunderhorn, and three from the leader, Eines Fein and Gazellen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did my first uh, orchestral performance, um, you know, solo thing, in uh, West Palm Beach oh. with Dance Theater of Harlem, and then at City Center. So this year they invited me back um, in between, I had done, uh, at the New York uh, International Arts Festival, I think it was, they, they uh, did Prince Igor, and I was a singer for that. And they had me in a costume and on stage and everything, which was really wonderful. And for the Mahler, um, I'm on stage as well, but stage left. And I have a spot, and I have uh, my music and everything. And um, it was just so nice to be back working with them, because Dance Theater of Harlem is, is a wonderful, marvelous, I can't say enough about the company mm. and about Arthur Mitchell. Yeah. Um, 
and they've always, when I've worked with them, they've always been very loving and very supportive and, and very nurturing as well. Yeah. Well, this year, um, I sang for the first time at uh, Lincoln Center in the State Theater. Not as part of City Opera, but with Dance Theater of Harlem. Um, Jesse Norman did the first performance. And I did the next three. So I'm following, mm -hmm. once again, moving in the same circles, but yeah. not at the same time. So I feel very honored to, uh, to follow behind Miss Norman. And then we went to Kennedy Center at the Opera House there. Mm -hmm. And I had four performances there. Um, then to Paris uh, for the, uh, and, and Rome for the recitals. I was invited back to Paris for La Fête de la Musique, which is a big music festival throughout the whole country wow. on June 21st. Oh. At the Credit Lyonnais. Um, I was participating uh, as part of the Credit Lyonnais Festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a long, long, long program. Uh, there were over 150 singers because it was all oh vocal music, choirs. Um, they had groups from Madagascar. They had rock musicians, pop singers, everything. So I was on that. And uh, then I did a concert at the Chateau. So I've been busy. Goodness me. <laughs> Goodness me. Um, before you go, I want to know what's going on this year, too. But tell me about these songs coming up, the John Carliano. This, these are the, uh, from The Cloisters? Uh, it's a song cycle called The Cloisters and, uh, by John Carliano. And these two songs are uh, uh, number two and number three, Song to the Witch of the Cloisters and Christmas at the Cloisters. Yeah. So anyone that's familiar with Upper Manhattan and Inwood and all of that. Oh, there are those about, Cloisters. Yes, that's the park those. and the museum that's there with the tapestries, um, the unicorn tapestries. So that's what these poems um, by William Hoffman are about. Now you also said there was a Cincinnati well, the connection because you're born in Cincinnati. The Cincinnati connection is this. When I was in high school, which was just last year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, she's young, folks. The, uh, I know that. The, uh, my music teacher... Uh, whose name is Baj Hammonds, who you would not know, but Tom Hammonds, you would know because of Nixon and China. Oh. And uh, that's, uh, Baj Hammonds uh, was Tom's father. He was our music teacher in high school. And uh, we used to have a special choir at 8 o'clock, I think it was 8 o'clock in the morning, and we would come in and do uh, the more difficult music. And this uh, Christmas at the Cloisters, was one of the pieces that he had uh, pulled out for us to learn. Hmm. But it was so difficult at the time, we couldn't learn it. But I remembered it because it was such a neat piece. And that's the Cincinnati connection. And that's why you that's do the piece. Well, that's why, that's why I picked them up. Because mm -hmm. you, had, you had heard them and, and liked them. Well, no, I had heard Christmas at the Cloisters and then found out that it was a song cycle. And not only that, it's orchestrated. So maybe one day, hopefully, yeah. I can sing it with an orchestra somewhere. So Christmas at the Cloisters is the second one you're going to sing. And the yes. first one you're going to sing is called Song, Song to, to the, the Witch, Witch of, of the, the Cloisters. Cloisters, which I think is about a bag lady. Oh. These are very urban, urban, like U-R-B-A-N yeah. poems. Um, in Christmas at the Cloisters is the Uptown Christ, the Hudson Guest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's very, um, very interesting poetry. Um, I'd like to hear what you think about it when okay. we finish, All okay? Right. These are two songs from the Cloisters, written by John Carliano and sung by my guest this hour on Around New York. Carolyn Sebron, mezzo-soprano Wayne Sanders is at the piano. Old lady in the herb garden This Sunday in the lavender Fat lady in the crawling leaves White lady in the sun I know by moonlight Sweet lady what you are Granny, granny
Christmas at the Cloisters, and before that, Song to the Witch of the Cloisters. John Corleano's songs, two of them from his song cycle, The Cloisters, sung by my guest this hour on Around New York, Carolyn Sebron, and at the piano, Wayne Sanders. She, I think she maybe is a bag lady. I think you're right. <laughs> Do you think so? I like those songs a lot. Uh -huh. I, I've got to run. I'm so, I, I told you at the beginning that I was already sorry that we didn't have more time. Oh. But I want to find out real quickly from you both what's going on with, uh, for example, Opera Ebony with Wayne Sanders. Wayne, what is your group doing? Well, we're going to be doing some very interesting things this year. We're celebrating, believe it or not, twi our 20th anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And we'll be taking a Midwest tour and be going back to Europe again oh, and uh, be on the lookout for some things happening here in Carnegie and back in some of the halls here. And they you just came from Martinique as well. We just came from Martinique uh -huh. as well. You keep us posted and we'll keep the folks posted too. <laughs> Definitely. And real quickly, what are you doing this year? Well, I'm scheduled to do my first, I was scheduled to do my first I'm Nearest at Carcassonne this summer. Uh -huh. um, but there were some little problems with the production. So uh, they decided, uh, it was coming from Poland as a matter of fact. Uh -huh. and. Uh, they decided they wanted to use a Polish mezzo. But the same producer is going to be doing Aida in October in Martinique, and I will be doing there oh, great. my first Omneris. And then I'm scheduled to go to the Far East at the end of this year. So I'm very excited about that because I've never been to Asia before. You keep us posted and come back. Very nice meeting you. What's well, nice Cincinnati. meeting you? Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> nice meeting you too. Carolyn Sebron, Mezzo Soprano, and Wayne Sanders at the piano. Thank you both for being here in Around New York this time. It's a joy. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Come back.
I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. A beautiful setting by Leo Edward. The song is actually called Sympathy. And just before that, we heard two by Aaron Copeland, Why Do They Shut Me Out of Heaven and Going to Heaven, performed live in the WNYC studios by our guest on this hour of Around New York. The remarkable artist, mezzo-soprano Carolyn Sabron, joined by Douglas Martin at the piano. And Carolyn, welcome back to Around New York. Thanks for joining us this Thank afternoon. Thank you. Very happy to be here. I'd like to say that um, Leo is a living composer, and he's on the faculty of uh, Manus here in New York City. And uh, actually, he's from my hometown as well, which is Cincinnati, so there's a special place for him uh, in my heart. And I try to do his music anytime I can. It's a Leo, beautiful song, isn't it? It is a beautiful song. Is it one that he wrote for you? Uh, no, but I was the first one, I think, to perform it. I'd like a chance to record it someday. Uh, it's a project I'm trying to put together. Um, I must say, people probably know the line, I know why the cage bird sings right, because sure. of Maya Angelou's book. Right, exactly. Uh, the first of her uh, several installments in her biography. But I, I think it's a wonderful poem. Uh, the poem is originally by Paul Lawrence Dunbar, who is an Ohio poet as well. So there's a big Ohio Lots connection of Ohio there. Connections yeah. going on mm -hmm. there. Music by Leo Edward uh, was that, that setting we just heard, uh, the song actually called Sympathy, performed for <laughs> us by Carolyn Sebron, who has a concert coming up on Sunday afternoon, a week from yesterday, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon at Aaron Davis Hall on the campus of the City College of New York. And you'll be joined by the Harlem Festival Orchestra. Well, uh, I'll be joining them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll be uh, performing a piece called uh, Motherless Child Songs by Dr. Leslie Dunner, who will also be conducting and Dr. Dunner is the associate director for Detroit Symphony and the principal conductor for the Harlem Festival Orchestra uh, since 1989. And I'll also be, excuse me, I'll also be um, the soloist for El Amor Brujo by Manuel de Falla. And uh, that's a ballet piece, but many times it's done in concert form like we will be doing on Sunday. I, I won't be dancing. <laughs> And in fact, we're going to hear an excerpt from the Faya in, in just a few yes. minutes. Uh -huh. That's coming up at Aaron Davis Hall, Sunday afternoon, afternoon. Carolyn Sabron and the Harlem Festival Orchestra, directed by Dr. Leslie Dunner. For more information or tickets, you can call 212-567-4643. And I, I want to talk more about the concert and, and some other things that are coming up as well, Carolyn, but we have lots more music to get to. Yeah, well, talk about the orchestra a little bit, oh, is that yeah, all right? Sure, yeah, the well, Harlem Festival Orchestra is a very interesting group. They're well, uh, they were founded about 10 years ago, and uh, this will be their inaugural concert in their new home at the Aaron Davis Hall. And you know, they rededicated the uh, big theater there uh, for Marian, in the name of Marian Anderson, one of our great American singers. And uh, so they're doing um, a very interesting program, not just because I'm on it, they're doing the uh, Samuel Barber Adagio for Strings. And they're doing, I believe it's the New York premiere of the first symphony by Adolphus Hale Stork. Um, and Mr. Hale Stork is on the faculty of Norfolk State University, and he's a composer in residence there. Um, Dr. Dunner is also a composer, as I said before, and I'll be performing his pieces. And it's, it's interesting because um, although I've sung with them before, but not on one of their concerts, they play for Opera Ebony and... Uh, some of the members have played in, in various things, a film score for Malcolm X, not as the orchestra, but as um, freelance musicians. Um, it's an established orchestra. They they do two big concerts a year, and then they do small things around. You know how hard it is when you're just starting out. But that's the Harlem Festival, and uh, Felix Ferrar is the founder, and he's uh, hovering over us like an angel, <laughs> making sure everything's going to go well for Sunday. So I hope everyone can get there. And the Harlem Fest Festival Orchestra is now in residence at, uh, at uh, the City College, is that right? I believe that they, this will be their first concert there. Um, they will be in residence, so to speak, that they'll go do a concert there every year. 
Um, they also split their concert spaces between Intercession, which is on 155th and Broadway. Um, but their main um, purpose is to provide opportunities for players and artists and to serve the community. Uh, so the dress rehearsals are open to senior uh, citizens and students to come, and that'll be over the weekend. Uh, Mr. Farrar makes those contacts. Uh, but we do hope that people will come out and support the orchestra because, as you know, the arts, um, we need every, every kind of support we can get, not just uh, financial, but to have people's physical presence there. Especially in these times of uh, difficulty for the arts and uh, questions about arts funding. Yes, The, the yes. concert is coming up Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock at Aaron Davis Hall on the campus of the City College of New York, the Harlem Festival Orchestra, directed by Dr. Leslie Dunner, and joins by our guests on this hour of Around New York, mezzo-soprano, Carolyn Sabron, who is going to perform some music by Mahler and Faya right now. Tell me a little bit about the, the pieces we're going to hear. Well, the first song is uh, Rheinleggenschen, uh, which is from Des Knaben Wunderhorn. And uh, it's a cute little song. I just love it so much. I first became acquainted um, as a singer with the song when I was working with Dance Theater of Harlem because they have a ballet set to seven songs, uh, four from Des Knaben Wunderhorn, and three from Lieder eines van den Gesellen. So this is one of them. Uh, it's about a man who's uh, working in a field and he misses his sweetheart and he takes the, the ring off of his hand. He throws it into the water. A fish comes by and swallows the ring. <laughs> Somehow the fish is captured and taken to the king's table where his sweetheart just happens to be sitting there with the king or maybe she's visiting a friend, who knows. The king opens the fish up and he says, well, whose ring is this? And she says, oh, it's, it's mine. And then she goes running back to her sweetheart. The second piece uh, is an excerpt from El Amor Brujo. And it's uh, the first song in the piece. And, uh, you know, this is a, a, a gypsy. This is a, the ballet is a story about gypsies. And there's a ghost that has died, but he won't leave his old sweetheart alone. So in this particular song, um, the woman is singing... Uh, when the river whispers to me, I hear his voice, and, and I, I, I'm in pain, and just all this kind of longing, and it's a song of sadness. So we'll do those two, and then we'll come back and talk a little more. We will indeed, okay. with our guest on this hour of Around New York, mezzo-soprano Carolyn Sabron, who's joined at the piano by Douglas Martin. We'll begin with some music of Mahler, some more adventures of a German ring, not music of Wagner, but this time music of Mahler, <laughs> with the Rhein Legenschen from Des Knaben Wunderhorn, and then music by Manuel de Faya from El Amor Brujo. Live performance on WNYC's Around New York with Carolyn Sabron. Come on. 
la pena. Once again, performing live on WNYC's Around New York, our guest this hour, mezzo-soprano Carolyn Sebron, with music of Gustav Mahler from Des Knaben Wunderhorn. We heard the Rhein Legenschen, and also music by Manuel de Falla from El Amor Brujo. Carolyn Sebron joined by Douglas Martin at the piano, and we'll be back with more live performance and conversation in just a moment. On the next Fresh Air, novelist Russell Banks. His new novel, Rule of the Bone, is about a punked out drug dealing teenager who hangs out in a shopping mall. Banks drew on what he's learned teaching in prison and at an Ivy League college, and he drew on his own troubled past. I'm Terry Gross. I hope you'll join us for the next Fresh Air. This afternoon at 4 on WNYC FM 93.9. This is Around New York. I'm Fred Child, and I'm joined live in our studio this hour by mezzo-soprano Carolyn Sebron, who's performed already for us music by Copeland and Leo Edward and Mahler and Faya. We have a lot more music still that we're going to hear, and you can hear her live in concert Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock at Aaron Davis Hall. The Harlem Festival Orchestra, directed by Dr. Leslie Dunner, will be performing, and they'll be joined by mezzo-soprano Carolyn Sebron as well Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. For more information or tickets, call 212 Five six seven four six four three. Carolyn, Carolyn, uh, you've done not just concert performances like is coming up Sunday afternoon, but a lot of opera as well. And a lot of reviewers have commented on not just uh, the beauty and power of your vocal instrument, but on your acting skills as well. <laughs> Which, and and even here in the studio, uh, we're we're doing live radio, and no one can see you except me. But uh, especially in the fire that we, that we that we just heard, you were really getting into the character of it and and gesticulating and motioning. And so I mean, even here in a radio performance, you were getting into the character of it and and uh, giving a little bit of a performance physically as well as musically. Well, I have. I have a couple of people to thank for that, and one is no longer with us, Italo Tayo. Uh, you, uh, some of the people that are, know about uh, you know, singers from a few years ago may remember that name. But um, when I was a student at the University of Cincinnati just yesterday, <laughs> um, he was the director of the opera department, and he was very um, good in instilling uh, stage discipline into us and also analyzing character analysis. And I think that's very important. Uh, one can get too carried away, and sometimes, there ha well, one has to have balance. But I, b I believe it's important to always, well, know what you're singing about, because that's important. It has, you must communicate, because we're communicating with words, not just making sounds. But I enjoy acting. I haven't done that much opera. I look forward to doing more. Um, I'm going through some, uh, I don't want to say changes, not metamorphosis, but uh, now I'm working on the, the bigger mezzo roles. I'm more of a, uh, I say a dramatic slash lyric mezzo soprano. And uh, I'm looking forward to my first Eboli in the fall, uh, which I'll be doing in France at Limoges. I'm scheduled to do that. Um, and uh, I'm also um, looking forward to doing other Verdi roles. I sang. Um, Kunitsa in the uh, production of Oberto with the New York Grand Opera last summer. And um, so I've been you know, working on the repertoire. It, it takes a little time to, to get it prepared and have it, everything in place. But I have some wonderful people that I'm working with and uh, people that believe in me and my talent. So we're coming along slowly. I'm scheduled to go back to France uh, this summer to do the Pergolesi Stabat Mater, and we are scheduled to record that. I always say scheduled because Anything can happen, one never knows. So I always say scheduled. Um, I'm scheduled to do that. I will be doing Messiah at Avery Fisher Hall, December 15th. That seems like a long way off, but it's only six months uh, with the National, National Chorale. I hope I got that right. <laughs> I'll tell everybody if I messed up. Um, but anyway, uh, I went to Guadeloupe in December, uh, which is in the Caribbean. And I brought these three songs to sing today, which I performed there. Now, you know, in, in the former French colonies, um, Haiti, Guadeloupe, Martinique, they speak Creole. And um, I'm an American, 
of course, and I speak a little French, but Creole is, is different. So that was, that was a, a stretch, and I had a great time with it, and uh, the people there enjoyed it, and I hope the people listening today will enjoy it as well. We have uh, three songs for you. One is uh, Danse Conni Conne. It's just a little child song, like a parent singing to the child, and it says, Quand uh, patate la tuite, when the sweet potato is hot, we'll eat it. And if it's not done, we'll eat it anyway. And then the second one is a, is a lullaby, Fe dodo, Fe, or Fet, uh, dormi, uh, go to sleep. Uh, and the third one, now those two are by, uh, arranged by Camille Nickerson. And the third one is by uh, an arrangement uh, by Fernand de Virel, uh, who is from Guadeloupe. And it's about a man who comes home after being out and he wants to have his dinner and it's not ready. So, li ba li, uh, a grand coup baton. He beat his wife with a big stick. Isn't that awful? And then, <laughs> but it's an interesting song, I must say. But these, you, one must remember, these are folk songs. And I think the, the wonderful thing about folk songs is that they deal with all, all types of subject matter. You know, in Western culture, we, we tend to only, well, I shouldn't say Western because they are Western, but let's say European, American culture. We tend to um, only concern ourselves a lot of times with love. And uh, this is another, another subject. Now, the song doesn't really comment on what happens after that. It goes into a thing about Ibeta Man Ibe, who is like the boogeyman who stands on the corner to steal kisses from the young girls when they go by. So that's, that's the three Creole songs so we have. So the you. justice and retribution will come from a different song somewhere else down the line for the... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Three Creole yeah. songs that, that you picked up while you were in Guadeloupe uh, well, this, this past um, December? Well, actually, my, um, my contacts in France said, you must sing these if you're going to Guadeloupe. And I said, well, I don't know about that. They said, oh, yes, you can do it. And it was funny because after the concert, uh, some of the people came up and started speaking Creole to me. And I said, oh, no, je ne parle pas Creole. <laughs> Excusez-moi. <laughs> you know. but, so, but we're going to hear you sing in Creole now sing, anyway. Yes, yes, Our yes. guest on this hour of Around New York is Carolyn Sabran, who's going to sing three Creole songs for us now. Carolyn Sabran, joined by pianist, pianist Douglas Martin, once again performing live on WNYC's Around New York. Ne mangez-vous, ne 
a nice upbeat song about wife beating. <laughs> <laughs> Finishing off that set of three Creole songs performed for us live by our guest on this hour of Around New York, Carolyn Sabron, mezzo soprano, who's joined by pianist Douglas Martin for those three Creole songs. Uh, wonderful performances and wonderful songs, those, uh, those Creole tunes. Well, I think, you know, we do so much of the same repertoire, the Schubert and the Brahms, and one needs a classical technique to sing these songs, and, and I think we need to bring more of this into um, the standard repertoire, because there's so much music around the world, and I wish um, uh, my command of, of Spanish and, and uh, Portuguese was better, because there's so much repertoire that just isn't performed. And I, I think as Americans, we have to, since we're from everywhere, we, we should and we must, and, and I think it, we must make an admission to embrace um, the different types of music. We have our standard, you know, Italian, French, German, and, and English repertoire. Not Eng uh, English, not American. And, and I think uh, we need to bring these other things into it as well. And many times language is the problem. I know I was working on some um, Hungarian songs, and um, I had to put them away for a while, and I'd like to pick them up again. But first of all, if you don't speak the language, you must really take some time out to learn a little bit about the grammar, at least so you have a, some kind of foundation upon which to stand. And then you find someone who is a native speaker to really walk you through it. And that takes a lot of time. Um, there were songs by Bartok, I think. Um, but uh, these are things that hopefully we'll get to over, over time. Um, I must say, uh, we were talking about things that have been going on with me. I, I now have management. Can I mention that? <laughs> <laughs> can I just you, say yes? Of course you can. Oh, you sound like uh, you're almost hesitant to do it. Well, I, you know, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm now with um, Columbia Artists, and I'm, I'm very happy about that and uh, looking forward to a, a long relationship with them. Um, and so things, things have been happening very quickly over the past year for me. And I say this is my... Uh, Second or third incarnation, <laughs> musically. Well, yeah, you've been you've been building a career f for a, for a while now. Well, I you know for me I had to wait, I had to wait, and uh, f for my voice type and and for my voice it just took a little longer, but uh, the race goes not to the swift but to he or she that endureth until the end. <laughs> now you be it's uh, what 15 years or so since you began performing. I've been performing since I was. Five years old. But so that was just since you began years. performing professionally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, fifteen years. Yeah, uh -huh. I was just five when I started. I won't ask the oh. follow-up questions. Oh, to of that, course obviously, not. But. You must never do. That. <laughs> never. But never, it was never just. Never. It was about f six years ago now that you were selected as a pro musicis, pro musicis a concert artist. performer, which meant yeah. you got to perform in concert halls around the world and also. Um, uh, sort of community service concerts uh, well, in, in different you, cities around the yeah, world well. Yeah, well, actually, uh, let me mention that Pro Music Cheese is having a gala tomorrow night at Alice Tully Hall. A little plug for Pro Music Cheese because they've been so good to me. And uh, they'll be having some of their uh, artists, I think 12 uh, alumni with them. It's going to be a wonderful concert uh, if people can come out to that as well. Um, but with Pro Music Cheese, I was able to, I gave debut concerts in Paris, Rome, um, in Boston, Los Angeles, and Washington, D.C. And I had sung here before, but I also did a concert uh, at the Wild Recital Hall. And so I was very happy about that. I also uh, headlined at Rikers Island for Pro Music Cheese as well, and uh, some psychiatric hospitals. And uh, I find great, great joy and pleasure in that. And one of the wonderful things that Pro Music Cheese does is uh, bring its concert artists not just to concert halls, but also uh, musical performances to folks who might not otherwise get a chance to hear that music. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. we've, we've had some uh, pro uh, some other pro musicis folks on who've mm -hmm. uh, talked about their wonderful experiences with that. And I'd love to talk more about that, but unfortunately... Well, we have to press in, on. In, eh? in order to get uh, both of these arias in, which I want to do, I want to get both of these arias in, um, we need to, to get to this music of uh, Mascagni and Gounod, which, which we're going to hear next. Tell me a little bit about the, these two arias. We're well, I think the first one uh, people will be quite familiar with, Voi lo sapete, uh, which is from Cavalleria Rusticana. And it's sung by the, um, it's really a soprano aria, but uh, something that I, I like to sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, Santuzza is, uh, has had an affair and with uh, Turidu, 
who originally was um, engaged to a woman named Lola. He went off to be a soldier, and when he came back, Lola had couldn't wait for him, and she got married. So he took up with Santuzza. Now, uh, at this point in the opera, Santuzza is very pregnant. And uh, this is a short opera, actually, but it's, it's very emotional. And she's coming to Turidu's mother to tell him uh, what happened. Not that she's pregnant, but that uh, Lola stole Turidu away from her because she was jealous of, of her happiness. And she says, now, well, I'm, I'm sad, I'm unhappy. She's, uh, she's going to be excommunicated eventually because she's done the wrong thing and gotten pregnant. Um, and the other aria is by Guno from an opera, Sappho, um, O Malir and Motel. Um, and the character Sappho awakens. She's been uh, asleep by the shore. And eventually she throws, she's, this is a song of farewell because at the end of this opera, uh, at the end of this aria, she throws herself into the waves and, and drowns. Wonderf wonderful, happy, happy things to end the day with. But uh, we'll do these uh, back to back, and if we have a little time left, perhaps we could end with our fourth Creole song, which is Adieu uh, Madras, or we have the Segadilla from Carmen, or uh, we have. I'd love to have all kinds lots of, of music things. from you, but uh, I think for the time being, we we're going to have to make started. do with the two arias from uh, Mascagni and Gounod, once again performing live on WNYC's Around New York. Our guest this hour, mezzo soprano Carolyn Sabran. She's joined by pianist. Douglas Martin performing live on Around New York.
And at this point, the audience rises to its feet as one for our guests <laughs> on this hour of Around New York. Carolyn Sabran, mezzo-soprano with Doug Martin at the piano, performing arias from Mascagni and Gounod. Remarkable performances of remarkable music. Carolyn Sabran will be performing Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock with the Harlem Festival Orchestra under the baton of Dr. Leslie Dunner. That performance is at Aaron Davis Hall at the City College of New York. For tickets or more information, call 212-567-4643. Carolyn Sabran, I wish we had more time to get in more music and conversation with you. We'll just have <laughs> to bring you back another well, time. Well, I'd be very happy to come back, and thank you for having us today. Thank you very much. Carolyn Sabran, our guest on this portion of Around New York.